Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I love Christmas time. How about you? Do you guys enjoy Christmas? I mean, I get it. We all, you know, we're going to be going home or with family or friends, probably going to multiple homes and opening gifts. And our Christmas is very celebratory, right? It's, it's, it's filled with joy and it's filled with excitement, but it's also filled with mystery and wonder because as you look at the gifts under the tree, you're wondering, I wonder what my wife got me. I wonder what my kids got me. I wonder, there's this constant wonder. I mean, have you ever asked yourself the question, I wonder why or how even gifts came into the picture of Christmas? I mean, wasn't it, isn't it all about Jesus? But how did this whole thing about exchanging gifts come into play? Have you really honestly asked yourself, like, yeah, I wonder, why the heck did we start buying stuff for people? Like, man, I could save all that money for me and go on a really good vacation. Well, let me tell you why. Because from the very moment that God spoke to this world and he said, for I so loved you that I gave my only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So think about it. The first person who got the ball rolling when it came to gift giving was God. And so it wasn't just any gift. It was the gift of salvation. It was the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. But you know what's interesting when you think about the story of Mary, when you think about the story of Joseph, just imagine, I wonder what their first Christmas was like. I bet you it wasn't celebratory. I bet you it wasn't filled with splendor and joy the way we all get to experience it. I, I promise you it wasn't like that. I know we read the story and we think that, wow, well, isn't that just so cute the way it all took place? I, I'm sure it was just wonderful. No, it wasn't wonderful. It was a challenge. I want you to understand today as you listen to him, I want you to lean in because I want you to know that when God gives a gift, he gives the gift of a plan. Not just any plan, it's a plan of salvation, but with that plan of salvation come some more things, come some things that God wants to do in your life. And so when you think about Mary and Joseph, I'm sure they already had a plan. I'm sure they already had things that they were dreaming about. I mean, I know they were just engaged and, and they were in relationship and they're living their life. And Joseph is probably working, you know, a job and he's saving up for his wedding. And I mean, just think about this. We're not just talking about any story. We're talking about some ordinary people living everyday life and, and already had some plans for the future. And then something takes place. God decides to bring a gift. You are God's gift. And how many know that a gift given that is not unwrapped is not a gift given yet until you really open it up? And I'm telling you, God wants to surprise his people. God wants to surprise his kids with some pretty awesome gifts. Are you guys here today? Just think about it. Let's start with Luke chapter 1 because I want to bring... I wanna bring uh, just some understanding of what's happening here because when you read the Christmas story in, 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 in Luke, you know, we, we just kind of like read it like it's a fairy tale. But no, these were, these were actual people like you and I. These are people that, you know, that had jobs and, and that had, uh, you know, a, a, a hope for, for a beautiful wedding. And, and they were planning to have children. I mean, I'm sure these were people that were thinking about the rest of their life like you do. But look at what happens this big old angel comes into the room. Can you imagine an angel, Gabriel, not just any angel, the angel Gabriel, the, the guy who went to war for God, and, and now he, he literally comes in and walks into her room and interrupts her, and, and who knows, maybe she was, you know, combing her hair. I don't know. Maybe she was dancing like the ballerina in the room. The angel walks in and says, hey, Mary, what's up, girl? I know that when we read that, we're like, oh, great, an angel spoke. I mean, I think I would be freaked out if I was in my bedroom and an angel walked in. I'd be tripping out like, what in the world is this? So please just understand that, that God, when, when, when God wants to interrupt your life, he'll do it in such a way that it'll literally shock you. And look at this, Luke chapter 1, verse 27, it says, 
And he was sent to a virgin. The girl was engaged to a man named Joseph. Why all the details? Because God wants to show us on Christmas that people have plans. And he came from the family line of David. Just talking about where he comes from. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel greeted her and said, the Lord has blessed you in a special way. How many want a special blessing from God? Yeah, I do. The Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. And Mary was very upset because of his words. And so it's not the kind of upset you and I are thinking about, like, you know, where we get upset. We get all funky, weird, and strange. No, she was just, it was a thought-provoking encounter. It was a, a, a not only thought-provoking, but she started pondering and wondering, what are these words that I'm hearing right now? And, and I'm telling you that, that God still speaks today. God is alive, and He wants to confront us with some questions. He wants to confront us with some thoughts, but she's pondering to the point of fear, and look what happens. And Mary was very upset because of his words, and she wondered what kind of greeting this could be. But the angel literally just stopped her at her track from all these thoughts of, I'm not qualified. I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm nobody. I have, I have nothing. My, my family line sucks. It's not, it's not the greatest. And he says, Mary, stop. Don't be afraid. Look at this. God is very pleased with you. God is very pleased with you. You know, when I read that part of that verse, I started thinking, like, what could God be pleased with? Like, what was it that he was pleased with? I mean, it's not like Mary was doing anything for God at this point. So what was he pleased about? What was it that, that brought pleasure to God with Mary? And he says, God is very pleased with you. You will become pregnant. And give birth to a son, and you must call his name Jesus. That's some pretty heavy words, man. That's some pretty heavy stuff. When you have your whole life planned out, and God interrupts your life, how many know that at that point, when you give God permission to interrupt your life, it's not just, yes, God, I allow you to interrupt my Sunday, you know, what December 20. Third, you can interrupt it and I'll go to church, but you know what? One thing is just to be interrupted of your schedule for a Sunday, and another thing is to interrupt your life. And God wants to interrupt some lives. The question is, is will you cooperate? The question is, is will you yield and submit to whatever it is, whatever gift God wants to give you? Are you willing to really ponder it, think about it, and, and, and meditate on what God is saying to us as, as you read his word and to think about what, what he wants to do. Now, once again, Mary was nothing special. She wasn't. She wasn't rich. She wasn't famous. She wasn't royalty. She was an ordinary girl. And now has this encounter with majesty, with the angels of the Lord. So she wasn't... She wasn't something unique, but you know what was special about her? And here's, here's what I honestly, I think, I started thinking, like, what, why would he say, you know, you're special, Mary? Why would he say you're blessed and you're special? Why would he do that? Well, I could only think about one thing, because she didn't do anything for him at this point. But when you read Hebrews eleven six, 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith. So do you know what was special about Mary? Is that she believed God. She, I believe you, God. Now, she was troubled. If you keep reading the rest of the story, it said that she went ahead and pondered the words, and she accepted. She cooperated. She went ahead and embraced it, though she did not understand it. She said, okay, as you said it, God, I will do it. That's what Christmas, that's the whole story of Christmas. The question is, will you do what God wants to do in your life? question is, will you allow God to interrupt your plans? And I know, that's, I know that, that can be so far-fetched because, like, what do you mean interrupt my plans? Like, I already got, 
I got, I'm, I'm in the rhythm right now. I got, I got a great career. I got a great family, and, and I love God, and I go to church, and, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm doing things for God here and there, but that's awesome, and I think that's the given. That's the lifestyle of a follower of Jesus Christ, but are you willing to abandon your plan and follow his plan? That's the question today. Because that's what the whole Christmas story is about. Two people that were interrupted to abandon their plan and to follow God's plan. And that's not always easy. And here you have Mary, a single girl at this point, when the angel comes to her and, and you know, she's engaged. She ain't married, but she's single. And um, she's about to have a wedding. And can you imagine what that conversation looked like when she had to go talk to her mom? Like, Mom... <laughs> Uh, I'm pregnant. And I mean, that probably freaked her. Because listen, in that culture, if you got pregnant out of wedlock, oh man, it would not go good for you. I mean, you could literally be stoned to death. Our culture today, you can be pregnant and not be married. And it's kind of like, whatever, it's the norm in our culture, right? So just think about the culture. So she's telling her mom, mom, I'm pregnant. Mom's probably having a fit. Like, I cannot believe you and Joseph did that. She's like, oh, and it's not Joseph's. That's even worse now. Are you crazy? Who have you been sleeping around with? Just, come on, can we just be human for one moment? These are ordinary people, have ordinary lives that are just like you and I, who are interrupted by an angel, and now they're cooperating. She's cooperating with, 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 with God. Please turn off your phones. And, uh, and now, so she's having this conversation with mom, and, and mom's like, like, are you serious, Mary? But you know what? But mom knew there was something special about Mary because Mary was a woman who feared God. Mary was a woman who pleased God. Mary was a woman who trusted God. And so the mother knew enough, enough of Mary's character to accept whatever it is that God spoke to her. Now, just imagine what that conversation looked like with Joseph. Like, hey, Josie, uh, we're pregnant. <laughs> And they have not been with each other. They have not been with each other. And so just imagine just what began to happen to Joseph hearing these, these very difficult statements that Mary's making. And you know what's interesting is this, is that as I think about when God gives the gift to each and every single one of us, the gift of a plan, you, you, you have to make sure that you are someone who knows the word. And here's why. There's, there's, there's a difference between um, uh, hearing the word, like you're hearing it audibly right now, and then there's another, um, it's another thing when you actually know God's word, meaning that you personally know the word of God. And the reason it's so key to know the word like Mary. Mary, obviously, she pleased God because she was a devoted woman of God. She loved God. She spent time with God. She read her word. When you first start reading the Bible, let me tell you what happens. You start reading, you're just reading it. And sometimes you're reading it and can't understand a lick of it. That's what happened with me. I'd be reading like, why, man? God's like whacking people everywhere, man. You know, start reading the Bible. I'm like, man, why do he kill? Why do he end the whole world? Why do he, why is he hurting people? And you just don't understand it. But let me tell you what happens as you continually read the word. You start reading it, but eventually the word will begin to read you. And after it begins to read you, it will begin to speak to you. Oh, I promise you. You think that I'm here being a pastor just because, hey, that'd be a great career. It was by far the last thing I wanted to do is ever be a pastor, ever be in ministry. I wanted to be a business guy. I wanted to have lots of money, and I wanted to travel the world and bless all kinds of nations with missions and finances. Like, that was my dream. This is the last thing. So how, did you, how do you come to this place? Man, God read me. And then God spoke to me. And let me tell you something. Every single one of you are, is, is God's divine plan. Every single one of you. And so here, here you have, have Mary who's now heard from heaven and, and she's cooperated. Okay, I'm in. But let's see what happens with Joseph. Check this out. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18. I'm going somewhere, so stay with me. And, and verse 18 it says, And this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary and Joseph had promised to get married. 
But before they started to live together, before they started their plan of starting life together as husband and wife, check this out, it became clear that she was going to have a baby. And she became pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit, and her husband, Joseph, was faithful. Was what? Faithful. How was Joseph? Faithful. Men, we need to be faithful to God. There needs to be a character of faithfulness to God. And so it wasn't just any guy. It was a faithful guy. He was faithful to the law. What's the law? He was faithful to reading the word of God. Obviously, they didn't have the New Testament then, but they had the Old Testament. He was a faithful Jewish boy reading the word of God. He was from the bloodline of David. And check this out. So he was faithful to the law, but he did not want to put her to shame in public. So he had some, some love for her. He didn't want to shame her like that. But check this out. <laughs> so he planned to divorce her quickly or quietly. Can you imagine that? So he hears, you're pregnant? Are wait a minute, we haven't been with each other. What do you mean you're pregnant? And she's like, hey, the Lord, he's, God sent an angel, and I was in my room combing my hair, and, and the angel walked in, and he said, hey, Mary, you're a special girl, and, and you are blessed, and you are highly favored, and you will, and you will be impregnated with the, the Savior of the world. And, and I, I cooperated with the angel, and, and the angel then said it, I asked the angel, how's this going to be? He said, the Holy Spirit. And, and I said, okay, is, is the way you said it, God, I'll accept it. Bam, boom, I cooperate. And bam, it was done. He's like, oh, no, girl, we're getting a divorce. So it wasn't this story of like, yes, I'm Joseph, the righteousness of God. I will take you. No, he's like, man, I'm a, I'm a go, we're going to go quietly. I don't want to shame you publicly, but I'm going to divorce you quietly. Before you know it, no one will even know that we were ever married. Verse 20, but as Joseph was thinking about this, as Joseph started getting all scared in fear, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And the angel said to Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. The baby inside her is of the Holy Spirit. The girl is not lying to you. Isn't that amazing that God will confirm it not only to the woman, but God will confirm it to the man as well? And he will bring exactly what was spoken in verse 21. And she is going to have a son, and you must give him the name Jesus. That's because he will save his people from their sins. And I want you to know this. In all honesty, God wants to encounter some people in 2018. See, that's awesome that God chose two ordinary people in that time. That's great. And that's a wonderful, amazing story how two people were willing to cooperate. But do you realize that those ordinary people did what they were supposed to do in their generation, in their time? And that God wants to have the same encounter with us in 2018, in 2019, God wants to speak to some people today. God wants to also deliver a gift to every single one of us. Not everyone is called to have a platform. Not everyone's called, you know, to own a business. Not every, but let me tell you something. But everyone is called to do something special and unique with God's hand of blessing over your life. Every single one of you. It's not just about going to church, you know, singing beautiful songs, hearing great messages, and then we go home and we live the rest of our life with our own plan. No. The question is, is where is Jesus in your plan now? Has he been invited in your plan? Does he have permission to interrupt your plan? And so he wants to bless her in a special way. He wants to bless him in a special way. And they cooperated and they were and they were blessed in a special way. But let me tell you something. But God wants to also bless you in a special way. I mean, I want to receive the blessing of God. Whatever it is that God wants from me, for my family, I want that special blessing. Not, do I, not only do I want it for me, but I want the special blessing on my children, Isaac and Alexis. I want that to continue not only my children, but my children's children and their children's children. And we have to, but it all starts with somebody. It, it starts with someone being willing to say, you know, God, I'm, I'm, I'm in it. If you read the Christmas story, there's an antidote how God chooses people. Do you guys want to know the antidote? 
I mean, how many want God to choose you to do something special while you're here on this earth? Does anybody want to do anything special to God? Do you want to get to heaven and be like, what'd you do, nothing? <laughs> what do you mean nothing? <laughs> nothing? <laughs> I'm here, your special gift. Oh, you're special, all right, praise God. No, God, 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 God puts the formula of a special blessing on people. Number one, the answer to the blessing, please God by believing God. What did, what did Mary do? She pleased. She, man, God was well pleased with her. Why? She believed God. Number two, cooperate with God's divine plan. You got to cooperate. In other words, when God gives you something special, guys, I'm telling you this. It's not going to make sense. If it makes sense to your natural mind, you're still thinking. If it doesn't make sense to your natural mind, if it seems so far out there where you even think you're crazy to think of it, that's God. Because when God gives you a gift, it is wrapped up with all kinds of stuff. Yes, it's a special blessing. Yes, it has breakthrough. Yes, it has victory. But I have learned in the 22 years of walking with God that even in that wrapped gift, it comes with anxiety, depression, problems, trouble. I mean, just look at Mary and Joseph. They were constantly running when they were carrying this child. It wasn't easy for them. And so it's please God by believing God, cooperate with God's divine plan, even when it doesn't make sense. And then number three, this is the big one, and it's the, it's the same thing the angel told both of them. Do you realize that in, in the Bible, number three is don't be afraid, there is 846 verses that say fear not. 846 Bible verses that say fear not. I wonder why. Because every single person God chose was scared out of their mind. I keep repeating, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. Say fear not. Fear not. And so the angel was basically, I'm good, guys. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. And so the angel is basically saying this. Hey, uh, Joseph, uh, I, I want to make something clear to you. You could either have your plan or you can have God's plan. Uh, you could either have your will or you can have God's will. You, you could either have God's blessing or you can keep doing what you want and create the things that you want, create the wealth that you want, or you can experience the blessing that God wants to give you. And that goes for us too. We have to come to the place where we have to give up our plan. We have to abandon our plan and start following God's plan. And that's not easy. It's not easy. It's a challenge. But I want the blessing of God on my life. I want the blessing of God on my children. I want the blessing of God on my call. I want the Do you want the blessing of God on your finances? Do you want the blessing of God on your, on, your, on your business, your career, your marriage, your children? Do you want that blessing? Then you need to follow God's plan. That's the whole story. It's following the plan of God. It's not live what you want, do what you want, whenever you want. That's not the plan of God. The plan of God is that we come to the place where we're fully surrendered, saying, God, interrupt me. I double-dog dare you to pray that, like, God, you know what? Before 2019 comes in, interrupt my life. Be careful what you pray for, man, because he will interrupt it. And it'll be an awesome thing, but it'll also be scary. But you got to cooperate. So I just think about their, their anxiety they're probably feeling. I mean, think about it. Joseph finally says, okay, I'll do it. And, and now he's, you know, they're traveling. And, and, and the angel comes back and says, don't go that way. Why can't we go that way? Uh, there's some really bad stuff up ahead. Uh, what do you mean bad stuff? Yeah, they want to kill Jesus. Uh, what? What do you mean they want to kill the baby? What are, you, what are you talking about? I mean, just think about this is, this is constantly. Let me tell you something. When God guides, he provides. Just don't ever forget that. When he guides you, he provides for you. You know, his will, his bill. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Uh, uh, trust me. Been there, done that. Got the t-shirt. I, I remember when I hit low points in my life in ministry, you know, I was like, okay, Lord, how's this one going to work? 
I'm like, it's your will, so your bill, man, figure it out, Lord, because I don't know what to do now. I'm telling you, when God, when God calls you, it, it doesn't make sense. When, he, when he's asking you to do something, it's not going to, it's not going to, your mind is not going to comprehend what he's saying. But think about this, they're running. And isn't it interesting that when God gives someone a gift, we tend to, to run from it and te- instead of running towards it? That's all. So they're running now. They're running for their life. Why? Herod the king. He's hearing about this dream. He's hearing about this child, this gift, this savior of the world. And you know what? He gets all crazy and everything. And you know what he does? He, we know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So what does King Herod do? He takes a 10-mile radius in Bethlehem. And you know what he does? He murders children from ages 2 and under. So just think about that for 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 this journey of Joseph and Mary King Herod is wiping out all these kids and then you have Mary and Joseph that are hearing about this they hear the wailing of mothers whose children have been murdered and they're having to hear this it's not just about this beautiful wonderful journey and this call of God this special gift no that sucker came packaged up with all kinds of depression and problems and challenges and yet they still kept trusting God through the process is that making sense I mean, they're going through it. They're challenged right now. I have learned that when God, and, and, and listen, when God gives a great gift, it's, it's, it's wrapped up with trouble. It's wrapped up with problems. Let me tell you something. And, 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 it's, and let, let me just tell you a personal story. So I'll never forget um, when, when I was, uh, before coming in ministry, I said, uh, I would never be a pastor I would never live in Santa Clarita. I didn't even like Santa Clarita. And, uh, and I would never do anything, any of these things. So um, just to give you some background, before ministry, I was, I was in business, and I was doing great. And then I was, uh, already had all my plans. Okay, I'm gonna, I, I got promoted district manager of all Southern California stores. Awesome. And then I said, okay, and then after this, my next plan was to join the Burbank Police Department. And you know what? To get in this force, you literally had to wait years to get into the Burbank Police. But because I had all my plans, I had district attorney letters of favor, city attorney letter of favor. I had letters from everybody. I had over 500 arrests rests in this time of process so man i had favor up the wazoo and so i'm like yes i got it all planned out i will then become the chief of police i mean my dreams were high like I, i'm gonna i'm gonna lead a whole city man then i'm gonna just keep going up the ladder and this this was my plan mind you and i was and i was going towards it and i was doing good i was really good at so there's nothing wrong with having a plan please don't get me wrong i think that everyone should have a structured plan I think that everyone should be planning their, 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 not just your career, but you should be planning your call. Your career should be your call. 85% of Americans in the United States of America are unsatisfied and unhappy with what they do for a living. You know why? Because they'd rather just get paid than step into a call. And so you just go ahead and you're just, you're just paycheck to paycheck. You're surviving, surviving. And listen, surviving is not good. Thriving is what God wants from us. And so, so I'm like, yes, I got, I got my career, I got my plans, I got my structure, and then you know what happens? I get saved, I'm in church, you know, it's serving, loving, doing all the proper things like a Christian should do, following Jesus, right? You know, serving at church, leading at church, going to every church service, doing everything, lifting my hands when they said lift your hands, shout when they said shout, doing it all right. And then God says, uh, through my pastor and she comes to me one Sunday and says, uh, uh, Mauricio, uh, would you be willing to leave your career and come work for us? I'm like, no, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're broken ministry. I'm like, I'm good. I'm like, I came from poverty. I'm doing pretty good right now. And I'm good. I'm like, I'm good. She, come back. she comes back. Months go by. Comes back a second time. Hey, uh, Mauricio, um, would you come work for us? Heck to the no. I'm good. I'm good. No, you know what? I, and I would say this. I'm called to be the chief of police one day. That's what I, I got a call. And it's from God. Praise God. She's like, oh, okay, okay. She's like, okay. All right, all right, all right. And I would talk to my wife. And my wife never believed in my call. She's like, you're not going to be no chief of police. She's like, I don't even like that. 
Uh, she's like, you're going to get hurt. I'm like, hey, what's wrong? What do you mean I'm going to get hurt, man? Don't you see these rocks here, man? What are you talking about get hurt, man? And she's just like, no, I don't even, I'm not even in agreement with your, you know, your, you know, your, your dream, your plan, whatever, be a cop, you know, chief, whatever you want to be. And I'm like, okay, thanks for the support. Um, and, and then the third time she comes to me, and I'll never forget it. This time it was fast. Uh, Mauricio, we need you to leave your job and come into the ministry. And out of my mouth comes, okay. <laughs> Listen, we don't swear, but I swear that's exactly what happened. Okay. And then she watched like, great, thank you. Uh, you'll start in two weeks and walked away. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not, the fear of God just hit me like, because I already knew ministry, you're broke. Man, you're, you have nothing. You're, you're like, you're, you're literally just like, man, it's, it's humbling sometimes. Help us, Jesus. I'm thinking, what did I just do? I just, I just abandoned my plan. And sure enough, you know what I did? Um, then we had a meeting. I went home. I told my wife, I'm like, uh, guess what? She's like, what? I'm like, um, I'm giving my two-week notice on Monday. And she's like, she's like what? I go, yeah, I'm, I'm going into full-time ministry. She's like, yay. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, do you understand what this means? I said, no more six-digit figure. <laughs> they're offering me minimum wage, and they're giving me only part-time. And she said, great. And so I went ahead, and I started i gave my two-week notice on monday and i went into ministry and let me tell you some things i wish i could tell like you know praise god i'm in ministry. oh my god it was hard it was balancing money and how we're going to do this but how many know that god when when god will prepare you for anything and everything he calls you to so it was it was like god god said no i i had you save for this time of a little bit of drought so that you don't go under. And so it was like God was already preparing everything. While even while we were in ministry because obviously we were making more money, it was like, how are we going to do this? Man, I would have random people say, oh, God spoke to me and told you to give you this. And they'd be like, check for 2000 check for $1,000. i am like, what in the world? I'm like, man, this is awesome. <laughs> But I just lasted just to get me through that season of part-time. And then, of course, God started promoting. And it was amazing. That was great. So now here we go, 14 years later forward. We're doing great. Things are wonderful in ministry, well-established, associate pastor. I'm supposed to take over the church. We're talking over thousands of members of church and be the successor of the ministry. And God interrupts me again. And he says, uh, uh, you know what? Uh, I need you to leave now. What do you, what do you, what do you mean we're going to leave? I already did that once. I left work. I left remember my career. <laughs> and, 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 and all throughout those 14 years, my pastor always said, Marisa, do you ever want to shepherd a church? Do you ever want to pastor a church? I'm like, heck no, man. I'll never pastor a church. You know? And I used to say this, and it's funny now, but it's true, because I've always had a lot of friends that lived in Santa Clarita, and I would tell them, like, man, why are you living in that desert, man? What's wrong with you? I would always tell them, come to the promised land. Come over here. And, uh, and I'm like, man, I would never live in Santa Clarita. Man, that place sucks. Man, are you kidding me? But when God called me and then says, I want you to go to Santa Clarita. But you know what was interesting? I had never, I have, I have driven by this. I didn't know what the city was called. But man, I was I'm like, my God, who would ever want to live in this area? And God calls me to the area that I said, man, who'd want to even be in this neighborhood? And it was New Hall, California. I'm thinking, what the heck is a New Hall? You know what I'm saying? I came from poverty, and now you're bringing me to poverty? And God says, I want you to go. I'm calling you. It was the most difficult, you know, thing at first to think about being a pastor. But then, you know what happened? Then it's like that excitement, like, wow, I'm, I'm called. Wow. Okay, God. And, you, you know, it always starts with excitement. Like when you first hear a word from heaven, like you're called to, to lead the nations. You're like, yes, yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> Say it, Lord. Yes. And it's awesome because when you're first given it, it's like it's exciting. Like, whoa, he's calling me to pastor. And so we did. We started. We came out here and we started doing construction here because this building was nasty. It was nasty. Okay, this was the first Bank of America, and it was established here, and it was here for 50-plus years. And let me tell you something. When we got here, there was bank, where, where all you people are sitting back there, there was bank tellers back there. Like, I'm talking about the actual bank telling 
tables and and carpet was na- the septic tank was cracked so you could smell the whole poop in this whole building it was nasty i'm not kidding you i'm not playing with you it was nasty you'd walk around and and the stage was it was depressing but but there was like a sense of excitement like wow man i got a church building praise god you know you're walking around like yeah this is gonna be great and let me tell you something let me show you a bench so we go into construction right and we're in construction. We're working it. I'm doing things with, you know, God said, you know, do a new thing. I said, okay, well, God, we can't do a new thing if the old thing still looks old. So he said, let's do a new thing. And so we started construction, not had much money. And uh, actually, we got into debt, and it was pretty nasty. And let me tell you something. When God first gives you the gift, it always looks beautiful. It's packaged so nice, and you're just like, wow, that's so cool. But there's something about when God gives you the gift, it starts out with excitement and joy. But a gift given is not a gift until it's unwrapped. And so a few weeks right before grand opening, which was Easter Sunday of 2010, I sat on that exact bench right there on the right. And we didn't have those buildings behind us. And I'm sitting there, and I'm unwrapping the gift. And as I'm unwrapping the gift, I'm telling you what happens. Depression starts sinking in. Anxiety starts filling my heart. Doubt starts crossing my mind. And I hit this low point on that bench. So low. Because, you know, you got, y'all come here, you're like, wow, this is awesome. How could you not like this? You weren't here. <laughs> there was many settlers that got all this together for you that are here today. It was depressing. New Hall was filled with prostitutes, gangbangers, haters. I would come to church. Let me tell you something. I'd come to church and preach. This is how depressing it was. I would preach, and, man, there'd be three, four guys right there in the second row sleeping. I'm like, my God, can it be that bad? Like, are you sure you're calling me to preach? You know what? I wish I could tell you, like, man, like, grand opening was awesome, man. This house was packed. All the friends came. Man, we're proud of you, Mauricio. Next Sunday, crickets. Like, where'd everybody go? Like, you're sort of thinking, like, what in the world? God, like, is this like, is this like a joke? Am I being punked right now? Are you going to come out right now with the angel and say, like, hey, you fool, that's not what I called you to. And it was months of this, this constant people coming and talking about me and persecuting me and lying about me and hating on me. It was kind of like, God, are you sure? This doesn't sound like a call of you. Like, this is, this is stupid. There's no way. I left everything again, twice. Money, everything. Because when we started this church, we left our paychecks again. And it was scrapping change again. It was coming back to poverty again. I come from poverty. God dropped me a new hall. Poverty. And so now you're... You begin to question. I start questioning. Like I'm sure Joseph, when he was walking through the journey, I bet you underneath his breath, he was probably questioning, how do I get out of this chosen gift? How do I get out of this? How do I step out? I bet you when Herod was chasing down Mary and Joseph, I bet you they had a moment where they thought to themselves, you know what? Is this really the plan of God or is this really a plot of the enemy? And you can reach those places But let me tell you something. I am so glad that even though I sat on that bench and all this depression, I never forget that bench. I don't like that bench. I don't even sit on that bench anymore. (laughs) All these things of depression, yes, it came with problems, this ministry. Yes, it came with challenges. Yes, it came with fear. Yes, it came with times of of like lack and dryness and and, and people coming and people going and people. Yes, it came with all that. But let me tell you also, when God gives you a gift from heaven, it also comes with blessing and breakthrough and, 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 and salvations and lives being changed and people being delivered from drugs and alcohol and people's families being restored. We've seen a plethora of people get saved at this church and it's an amazing thing you know what happens when God gives you a gift it is so shameful to hold it back that's like me let's just say I had the cure for cancer and I didn't tell anybody I had the cure for cancer man shame on me let's say I had the cure for HIV for AIDS and I held back that information I said I'm gonna keep this secret I ain't gonna tell anybody 
man, might as well lock me up in jail and never let me see light again. When God gives you a gift like your Lord and Savior Jesus, who was willing to die for you, who was willing to take your sins, who was willing to take your pain, your suffering, and put it upon himself, how in the world can we hide the greatest gift in this world? And his name is Jesus. How can we do that? He is the deliverer. He is the healer. He's the restorer. He's the one who sets people free. Do you know something? You may be sitting here like, I don't know what my call is. Let me tell you. Yes, you do. You know what Jesus said before he left? He said, this is what he told every disciple. He says, I want you to go into all the world and bring this good news of the gospel. And I will be with you everywhere you go. So where in the world did we misinterpret the gift that God gave us? Where did we miss it? Every single one of you have a specific plan from God. And the only reason you don't see this, this revival, this movement. I mean, there was revival in the Bible times, obviously. God picked a few good men. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Why few? Because only few are willing to actually cooperate with God. You have to ask yourself, am I just going to keep being comfortable with my salvation? Am I, am I going to keep cheapening my salvation and just think that, man, I can just do what I want, when I want, how I want, and I'm okay with that? No, I have to go all in for him. That, that's the story of Christmas. Two people who are willing to go all in for him, no matter how challenging the package, the gift was, they went for it. It wasn't easy. It was hard. And they watched his son grow up and go through more pain. But let me tell you something. With any gift that God gives, though it may be filled with some pain and suffering and problems, let me tell you something, but it always pays off. Always. I don't regret one day anything that we had to go through in order for Elevate Church to be here eight years later. And I will not regret it for the next 10 years, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. I will not regret any of the pain and suffering that we have to face because at the end of the day, it, pay, it pays off. Salvations will come to Christ. People will get healed. People will get set free from alcohol. People will get set free from drugs. People will be set free from all kinds of pain and hurt. People will be delivered. People will discover their calling because of this house. You're an ordinary person with a majestic God. Last scripture. When God guides, he provides. I close with this. You can close your Bibles if you want. Not only was it Mary and Joseph, but then God also chooses three wise men to go validate what God was doing. Think about it. Why were they wise men? Because God knew that on this earth there would be intellectual people that would, that would be so educated or that would be so indated with information that it would be difficult for them to ever come to the true knowledge of God. And so he chooses these three wise men and now they're on this intellectual pursuit. But notice this, when you are in pursuit and when you are open and willing to know about this Savior, this Lord, this Jesus... The God who guides is the God who provides. God provided a star for those three wise men, and he said, just follow the star. They already had plans. They had been working out astrology. They're, they're, they're learning everything. They're, they're wise. They're intelligent. They're very well educated. But they also had an encounter with the angel, and, and they had to go ahead and go on this intellectual pursuit, and they're following the star, and they're following and then Herod comes in and tries to trick the three wise men. But when God is guiding you, God is providing you with wisdom from heaven. And he, they understood that Herod is trying to trick us. He wants us to find Jesus and come back and tell him so that he can kill the boy. And so they lied and they said, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll tell you. Uh, yeah, I think he's going towards the west, but they were really going towards the east. And so that was awesome. God, listen, when you're in that darkest hour, when you're in that darkest place, when you feel like you're in confusion and chaos, let me tell you something. The angel of the Lord will come and direct you and guide you. And so now they're walking, and guess what? They finally come to it. They see the star, and it's hovering over 
Jesus and Mary and Joseph and and they all three of them walk and look what the Bible says put my verse up please and it says and when they had come into the house they saw the young child with Mary his mother and they what fell down and they what worshiped him why am I saying this to you because some of you here today you're still too intellectual listen if you keep trying to be all intellectual you will die with information and never transformation you're just an intellect no I does I can't understand it I can't when if you could understand God then why would he be God why would he be God if I can figure all of God out why would I want to have a God that I can completely understand 100%? Why? And they come in, and they've been on this intellectual pursuit. Now they go from intellectual pursuit to heart of worship. And they're like, man, this is real. And they fell to their knees, and they worshiped him. And that was interesting because as they fell and they worshiped him, they started thinking, you know what, wow, this is the Savior. And I'm here to tell you that maybe you're here and you're, you've been very intellectual, everything you question, question, question. Listen, if three wise men, like why would God use three wise men? Because he wanted to tell anyone in this earth, if you think you're wise, you're not that wise. Three wise men. They had more wisdom to finally come to the conclusion in the end of themselves that there is a God who loves this world and sent his son, Jesus. And they finally came from intellect to worship, and they're worshiping him, and they're kneeling before him. And, of course, now they're experiencing great salvation. If you're here and you've been trying to find God, but it's been all through intellect, that's awesome. I'm glad you're intelligent. That's great. But today, Jesus is saying this Christmas, I want you to go from intellect to worship. They knelt down. They knelt down. There must have been so, something amazing. Do you know that God was bringing them the greatest gift, salvation? That's what God's bringing you, the gift of salvation. If you're here and you've never invited Jesus into your heart, I want to invite you to receive the greatest love. Not just the greatest love, the God who has a plan for you. And here's how it works. At the 8 a.m., we had people say, yes, I know there's people here as well. Stop pushing God. Stop fighting God. And just receive the plan of God. Because his plan doesn't make natural sense. But let me tell you something. But once you accept that plan, whew, this is the most amazing journey. It's awesome. Today, I'm asking you to abandon your plan of your ideas, your your thoughts towards God and just come to the conclusion like, you know what, uh-uh. I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to abandon my intellect and I'm going to receive the greatest love and his name is Jesus. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.